All right, welcome everybody. Uh, in this video, I'm going to just cover uh, the address of entry, which is a field in the PE file format that defines where code will be executed upon the image, the executable being loaded into memory, um, and then finding main. And this is something that I, I get asked enough. Um, I've done it and I've covered it in a lot of videos, but I realize in, in going back and trying to figure out which videos, it took me a little bit of time. So I thought it was worth just uh, you know explicitly calling it out here. Finding this series on the PE file helpful? Take a moment to hit that like and subscribe button. Don't hesitate to leave a comment or question below as well. Okay, let's get started. Um, as for target binaries or sample binaries here, um, you know you can grab anything. I'm going to use uh, one of the source code files from this repo that I have on GitHub. Uh, if statement, uh, I have two versions that I've compiled with this uh, with that source code. And that's going to be the if statement at exe. So this is going to be a 64-bit version, and this will be then a dash x86 will be the 32-bit version. Just to show you a little bit of the difference in finding main with these executables that were compiled using Visual Studio, I use the developer command prompt in order to do that. Uh, we don't probably need to spend too much time here, but you know, cl and then the if statement c or whatever whatever source code file you have that should be enough to give you your resulting executable. This is the 64-bit version of the developer command prompt. Therefore, you'll get the 64-bit binary. You go open up the 32-bit version, you'll get the 32-bit binary. Now, when it comes to the address of entry, uh, let's just take a look at that in the 010 editor. Uh, you'll see I'm going to have three samples, three binaries that we're going to look at today. The first one here is the 64-bit and the address of entry. This is going to be under the image NT headers under the optional header, and you'll see there is the address of entry. So this value is a D word four byte value. You can see it highlighted here, uh, and it is one, two, a zero. So this is an offset from the image base to define where the beginning of execution for this program will take place. Now, um, we put this kind of in conjunction with the image base value, add those two together, and you'll get the actual virtual address. Uh, and so that'll, that'll denote the entry point. Now, why this is important to talk about is because you'll have certain programs, certain executables, uh, for example, the sample binaries today, that if they're compiled with a compiler that adds additional logic for runtime stuff like the stack cookies and other things, um, main won't necessarily be at this address. And so you won't necessarily want to start at the address of entry. You'll want to find main in order to begin your analysis. Now, I'm going to caveat that with Malware comes in a variety of different formats. And so you'll find some address of entries will be the beginning of the actual malware. Sometimes it's the beginning of the unpacking logic or you know, some logic to help with the obfuscation of the binary. So you, you really, it's really gonna depend on what you're looking at. But um, the, the patterns here, you know, when you come across something compiled with Visual Studio, this can be a, a, good, you know, a, a good sequence here, some good patterns to recognize. Uh, now, if we take a look at the 32-bit version, very similar. You can see I've already got the optional header expanded. We have the address of entry point. This is a uh, you know, relative offset from the base, 1285. And this has the more traditional image base of 400,000 hex. Right? So that's kind of all there is to it. Um, I think then what makes this more relevant, and, and usually where I care the most, is when I, am, you know, when I decide to reverse engineer these binaries. So... So let's just go ahead and we'll start with the if statement.exe. And I, and I actually just closed IDA to, so I can reopen it. So you can kind of see what happens here. Um, you know, some of the things that IDA does that are usually incredibly helpful is navigate you to main. It usually does a pretty good job at this. Not all of your disassembly tools will do that. Uh, and so that is, you know, especially if you're, you're new to reversing, something to keep in mind. You can see... All right, I just turned on line prefixes. That was under options general and line prefixes. And that gives us essentially the segment and then the virtual address um, in IDA here. And so IDA you know, acts kind of like an operating system loader in that it maps this into what would appear to be memory. Um, you'll see then that this looks like the image ace plus an offset of a thousand hex, which is generally the beginning of your dot text section. Um, but that's not the address of entry. You know, if we go back to 010, and we look at that 64-bit sample, the address of entry point was at an offset of 12A0. So how did we get there? Well, for that, we can look at cross-references. So we can look at main, hit X, X is the shortcut key to pull up cross-references. 
we want to look for the cross reference here where there's a call right we call there will be a call to main main should only be called once and so we can double click on that that'll follow us to this call um, and you'll see this is where kind of this this pattern can help you um, if you think you're in your code compiled by Microsoft um, we have with 64 bit and this is going to vary just a little bit now when we look at the 32 bit sample but with 64 bit uh, we're going to have three arguments and those three arguments are going to be environment p argv and argc three arguments for main now with 64 bit those are using you can see that ida has denoted uh, the fast call calling convention you can also look that up on msdn the x64 calling convention uh, and all that's really saying is that with the parameter passing with 64-bit binaries, we're not, it's not using the stack exclusive. Um, it's passing the first four arguments to functions um, in registers. And in particular, if these register uh, values are integer values, or I'm sorry, if these argument values are integers, from left to right, it's going to be RCX, RDX, R8, R9. So we can go back to Ida there, and you can see that if we go, let's just go backwards here, um, ECX instead of RCX, RDX, and then R8, right? So those are the three. So you can look for these three moves essentially before the call to main. And typically there's only one function call in here with three arguments, right? And so you can kind of look around at these other calls if you're, if you're curious. Um, I've also noted over the years that, uh, I don't know, <laughs> I've always said it's about three fifths of the way down the graph. But you can see here, it's you know generally towards the end of the graph. Um, you can look at the return value. That is something that can also be evaluated here. Um, and one other area to help just identify generally this function is if we go to the beginning of this function and trace cross references to it. Um, these again, these these Microsoft binaries tend to or, or binaries can compiled with Visual Studio here. Um, they tend to have this call jump. Now the 64-bit version has a sub and an add, um, but this call to security and cookie and then a jump to the rest of this function essentially. All right, um, ending up at this location, you'll also notice that we are finally at the address of entry point. So there again is our, our image base plus our offset one, two, A zero. Uh, and you know, most of these RE tools you know, such as IDA will also uh, annotate or, or kind of label this as the start. So you can see here, that Ida has made this clear that this is the start as well. So that's really the path that you're seeing here going from the address of entry point, which is labeled start to main. Now let's compare that to the 32 bit. So let's open up 32 bit. We'll open with Ida. You'll see that <clears throat> in this case, it's going to navigate us uh, to main, just like with the previous binary. Go ahead and get line prefixes on, and you'll see. Okay, here again, we're at this address image base plus a thousand hex offset. So we can look at 010 and we'll see that we are image base 400,000 hex. Our address of entry, though, is 1285. And so, very similar, right? Calling convention for main 32 bit binary C declaration it means that we're going to have arguments pushed onto the stack. So, this is maybe a bit clearer in a way, I guess, depending on if you know you're looking at 64 bit though, those moves into those registers will become second nature to recognize uh, if you look at it enough, as, as well as, of course, these 32 bit. Um, but here we have, you know, our call to main, you know, Ida, Ida renames this main. You know, if Ida doesn't recognize it, it's just a call to sub 401000. Uh, but then these three pushes are a pretty good candidate. Because Ida recognizes it as main, just, just like in the previous binary, it also adds this comment, that's argc, argv, environment p, and likely it renames these up here in the, the function. And if we looked at the pseudocode, uh, very similar for that. Uh, you can see down in the function graph, kind of a similar, you know, three this ish of the way. I have no scientific way of measuring that. I probably at should point, you know, go through the instructions and count them and maybe calculate it. But, uh, you know, generally, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're not in main, but you're in a place that looks kind of like this, right? Here's just a call and a jump. And here is the address of entry, 1285, right? Well, then we can navigate here. We can scroll down to about here. There's three pushes in the call, right? And, and now we, we're, we're likely going to find ourselves in main or, or something that is much closer. 
Um, although in my, in, you know, my experience, um, if I recognize this pattern, right, if the binary starts with this call and this jump, um, that has been helpful to recognize because then, you know, it would appear to be something compiled, compiled with Visual Studio. Um, and I know that from this jump, I should be able to locate main, you know, kind of in this area from in, in the function graph. Okay, so uh, that is then the entry point, 1285. And you can see with uh, things like IDA here, if we update the display, we can also get the section. Uh, that can be quite helpful. And there are many tools. Uh, I try to, it, you know, these videos cover a, a number of different PE parsing tools. I've been favoring DAI quite a bit over the last, uh, you know, last few videos, I suppose. Um, let's grab the 32-bit sample. And you can see that if we just go to Oh, I forget where it's at now, but let's open up memory map um, and we can go over on this left hand side. We'll have the ability, or I'm sorry, right? Yeah, left hand side image optional header. We can scroll down a little bit and you'll see the address of entry right here. Um, and it's showing us what section it's in. Uh, PE Studio is another one. Great, great utility that also shows, has a very nice display of the sections. Um, and then it, it very clearly denotes the section that's the entry point. So that can be interesting information to understand, especially as you're trying to understand maybe a little bit bigger picture about what's going on in the binary. For example, looking for signs of packing. Now, um, I mentioned that not all binaries will be the same. And so there is a binary here that I've been looking at for a number of reasons over the, the course of, of the summer here when I'm recording this. Uh, and that is a lock bit three binary that was produced by the builder. So this would be typically the binary that is uh, distributed and, and would be part of an incident. Um, you can see this This is a 32-bit binary. The image base is 400,000 hex. The address of entry is 1946F. And if we take a look at that one in IDA, here is the entry point, 41946F. Um, and this just has a different feel to it, right? This one you can tell by looking at it, it starts with these knops. And then um, as you start to investigate more, you know, you come to the realization that, oh, this first call does the unpacking, this next call does the, you know, the runtime linking, right? And so this, this actually is where this program begins. There's not compiler generated code that I need to worry about and get past in order to start my analysis. My analysis would really start at the address of entry. So just wanted to show you an example to you know, cover the 64-bit, the 32-bit, those are just being compiled with, with Microsoft. Um, and then something that's maybe a little bit more, I don't know if I wanna say common, but certainly more in this variety of, of, of techniques and, and different kind of, of structures that you'll see when dealing with malware in the wild. Okay, so certainly there's more tools we could look at and explore, but I wanted to keep this one really to the point, just talk about the address of entry and some of the nuances with that value and actually finding main. So hope you enjoyed the video. Comments are open. If you have any feedback, love to hear from you. Otherwise, I'll see you all in the next video.